All right, so as I promised, we're about to hit 85 fishing. There we go. And that was two and a half days of fishing sharks. So I'm going to show you guys how many I have. But now I can fish cave fish. So that is the next step in my progression. And uh, before that, though, actually, you know what? I'm going to go and fish a bunch of them. And when I'm done with that, I'm just going to start cooking my sharks until I get to, I think it's 88. And then I can start cook, uh, cooking cave fish. But look at this. This is absolutely beautiful. Look at this. 8,454 sharks. I will never run out of sharks. There is no possible way. And also, I only got one big shark. I think one big shark is like 1 out of 5,000 drop rates. So I guess it makes sense. If I would have ca caught 1.6k more and I got two, that would have been like exactly on point. Uh, but yes, let's get into some K-fish. And cooking these is also going to give me so much cooking experience. And oh my god, the amounts of food. Man, this living rock striker is like, oh, I'm going to get you. Oh, you can't escape. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm almost in range. I'm going to get you, man. I'm going to get you. I'm so close, man. I'm going to get you. I was going to go for 1000 K fish, but after 500, I realized that's going to take a very long time. And I don't really think I'm going to use a lot of these. It's only going to be for really high level content. Probably when I get to Araxor, that is the time when I'm going to start using these. Because Sharks works for Slayer and God Wars 1 and God Wars 2 and, you know, everything like that. That is kind of relevant for me right now. So I will have a lot of Sharks and I'm going to actually start cooking these now. I need to get out my cooking gloves. They should be here, so... There we go, and uh, yeah, let's get into some cooking now, and I think 500k fish is going to be absolutely enough for this. So, I think I'm actually going to cook all of these 8k. I don't know how long that's going to take. Maybe I'll just do half of them, but overall I'm going to cook a shitload of sharks. I'm about to hit 90 cooking, there we go, 90 cooking, and the reason why I'm going to actually end cooking sharks here is because I, do, I don't have that many left to cook, but uh, I want to get into some more interesting stuff. This has literally been like 40 hours of fishing and cooking, which isn't really the most fun thing to do, even though it's been mostly AFK, it's not the most fun to do. Um, so, oh my god, I ended on 420 burn sharks. Wait, I'm actually just going to save that. That That's going to have to stay there. I, there's no way I'm going to remove that ever. Anyways, um, I have 6.6 thousand sharks. Yes. Now, the thing is, I went for 90 cooking because it looks cool, honestly. I was going to go for, you know, all my sharks done, but I realized, you know, I want to get to the level that is the highest level for me to not burn as many cave fish, because they're obviously worth more than sharks. Um, so, 90 cooking was the highest level I could get to. If I use all of these sharks, it's not going to give me 91. So, there's not really any point of uh, cooking these. And, uh, you know, 89 is just more burnt cave fish, you could say. And I only really needed... 88 in the beginning to be able to cook these and actually if you want to know at level 94 if you have cooking on let's you cannot burn these anymore uh, But yes, yeah, so let's get cooking with these cave fish and I'll show you guys how many I did burn after 500 now, I have to say this was actually quite unexpected. I didn't really burn that many at all. And maybe they just don't really burn that much, like, in general. Because I only burned 21, so I get, got to keep 479. Even though I seem to be, like, four levels of the where you can't burn it anymore. So I'm actually just going to delete these. And it is actually, finally, after, like, 40 hours, I think. It might be even more than that of doing this shit. But honestly, it was worth it. Um, but now it's done, so let's get into something a lot more interesting I have to say holy hell this is one of the most annoying quests I have ever done actually the machine for this quest and by the way this is the eye of Glopharine I think that's how you pronounce it at least at least Google Translate told me that so I'm going to believe it but anyways um, this quest was really annoying overall it's easy if the puzzle which is like you put these uh, these kind of shapes into a machine and then you get other shapes and they're worth different values and stuff like that if you understand that then yeah maybe it's easy i had no absolutely no clue what i was doing but i somehow managed to do it it took me a long time and i was literally trying everything and in the end it just worked but yeah, it took quite some time to do this, but anyways, that is two quest points, pretty decent, 12,000 magic experience, uh, not that good. Um, Runecrafting experience is actually not that bad, but I didn't get a level for it. What is this? 250 construction experience? Uh, also, what is this crystal seed? Honestly, I don't know, I will have to look into what that is, um, but anyways, that is the Eye of Glothrine completed, and I think there should be... One more requirement, I need to do a uh, tree gnome stronghold, I think. And then after that, I should be able to do the path of Glothrine. Uh, let's go. Oh, this is going to be bad. There we go. 
So, I need to do three gnome village is what it's called, and then I should have every single requirement. I don't think I need a sextant watch and shard. I think that's just on the tool belt now. Um, so, yes, let's do three gnome village. I think I have every single requirement for it. Maybe I don't. I figured out what the seed is actually used for, and it's to make the crystal saw, which I think gives like a passive boost to construction, so I guess that's pretty cool. Uh, but this is the three gnome village completed, two quest points, 11,000 attack experience. Dude, that's actually a lot for the requirements you need to do this quest. There's like no requirements to do this, and it's 11,000. That's decent. Could be good for people who like do dead man mode and stuff like that, I guess. Uh, but anyways, gnome amulet of protection. I have no idea what this even is, but maybe it's used in some other quests in the future. But anyways, I think we should be able to do the path of Glophorine now. Uh, can't even remember where it was, but I'm pretty sure we should be able to do it. There we go. And uh, yeah, that seems to be everything. Let's do it. So I'm doing the quest, the path of Glophorine, and uh, I encounter these, and I've seen these in various other progress videos, and now I know exactly what they are. Uh, if you kill them, they have a, an okay chance of dropping a decent amount of tortoise shells. It is definitely a better method of killing these than killing the ones outside of tree gnome village or whatever it is so this is a good way of getting those shells if i want to get some tortoise beast of burden which i might use for a reaction in the future and stuff like that so that's quite sweet i think it's not 100 drop rate but hey you can get some tangled toad legs that's neat i guess and i got a task completed as well but besides that, that we have the quest completed, one quest point only, that's uh, it's quite cheap of you, I'm going to have to say. But anyways, we get access to that tortoise dungeon that I showed, uh, and then some experience. Nothing too much interesting here, I guess 5k thieving is the best one there. Maybe, I think I leveled actually, let's see if I did. Yes, I did, 67, not too bad actually. Uh, but yes, we have all the Glofrine quests now completed, which is actually really cool. Also, I heard that if you do read all the conversations by Hazelmere during this quest you get some like newfound respect for him is not a crazy guy apparently but it was way too much to read man I'm not going to do that but um, that is really cool to have that completed but as I said in the past video I'm only going to do about three quests per video not to bore you guys so this is going to be the third one and the last one for this video but it's awesome to get some progress with the uh, quests and I have 224 quest points now not that much interesting happened during this Commander Siliana trip and the reason to why I did this and the only reason to why I ever do Siliana really is because of Reaper assignments. It's usually quite decent points and it's really easy to do uh, but the rewards overall from it is not that great so let's see what I get for the last kill. Probably nothing really and we get some rune arrowheads. I'll take those. Oh 70 assignments. We gain tech 10 extra reaper points. Wait, that's actually nothing. I thought we'd get more than that. Uh, but overall, 22 reaper points. That's actually quite cool. cool. Um, you know, I'm going to teleport out and I'm going to just quickly turn off my prayers. I'm going to have a look at how many reaper points I currently have. Uh, I do have two hydrixes in the bank, if you didn't know that. Uh, but I currently have... Uh, close to halfway to uh, my third Hydrix and what I'm going to use my Hydrix is for the two uh, I do have is Amulet of Souls first off and I do need two more crafting levels for that and then after that I'm going to make a Death Touch bracelet and some people have said you should have make it should make a Ring of Death before that the thing is I'm going to buy Ring of Vigor or I can just do the Broken Home quest for some quest points which I need anyways for while Guthic sleeps and get the uh, Asylum Ring now it's quite a pain to do that because you have to do the quest twice uh, but over Overall, a Death Touch bracelet is at the end of the day tier 90 gloves, and I don't have any good gloves for Araxor. The only ranged usable gloves I have is War Priest, which is horrible. So I'm going to get the Amulet of Souls, and then after that, I'm going to get the Death Touch bracelet. There's so many good things about this clip. I just finished my Slayer assignment, and literally on the last kill, I get a hard clue scroll. We can also reroll this hard clue scroll, which is obviously a good thing as well. And we got a milestone Slayer assignment number. Look at that 370 for 100 Slayer points. Now, honestly, I don't know how many Slayer points we have currently. I think it's quite decent amounts. So 440, yeah. I don't really use them for anything, uh, only skipping tasks, really. I could maybe block one more task now. I haven't really checked. But as I went over, I think it's every 100 um, quest points you get. So I might be wrong on that, but that's what I think it is. And as we quite recently got over 200, I might be able to block another one. So I'm going to do this hard clue now and let's see what we get. Well, I gotta say, this is uh, very interesting. I got every single Mystic Staff except, I think, the Air one. 
Uh, I've never got that before, and then obviously the misc teleports. Well, I'm going to reroll this straight away because 76k is nothing to keep, even though it was quite a cool one. So let's confirm that. Oh dear, four of these, that's going to be worth a lot. 900k, but overall I think we actually lost money on that because I think 76k was pretty much pure Alex, and now we only got room play body on 20k. I guess that was a successful reroll, I'll take it. Oh, and before you guys say, oh man, it's 50 quest points, not 100 for every single block task. Yeah, I found that out, so just letting you guys know. So I'm currently working on a mutated Jadinko task, and I got an Elite Clue Scroll really, really early into the task. So let's open that for, uh, ooh, a uh, Dragon Play Party Ornament Kit. I'm pretty sure I already have that, because I have so many Ornament Kits when it comes to the Dragon Gear, it's actually unreal. So I, I really don't see any use of any of these items, I'm going to reload all that as we can do that. Confirm, and we get some noted stuff. Nothing really interesting, so let's keep on going with Slayer. Oh sweet, the second elite already like 60 kills after that and someone just got a spider leg bottom. That's going to be me soon guys when I get into Araxor. But also, I want to say one thing and the re main reason why I'm recording here is because now on Monday there will be a Port Sarim World event and they did say that you will be able to get free herb lore experience and I have no idea if that's going to be any significant amount but if it is, that is going to be so good because overall I need 1.7 million herb lore experience to be able to do Araxor. Axor, and uh, yeah, any free experience uh, towards that is absolutely amazing. Let's move over this slide now and see what we get from this elite clue scroll, uh, please. Two rune- wait, that's not rune for arms, that's dragon helms, like, two of them, I've never got that before, I think. Is that like super rare to get, because I know you can get dragon helms like quite frequently, but two of them? I don't think I've seen that before, so I'm pissed. I remember last time I did a mutated Jadinko task, I also got like three elite clue scrolls in one task. But the thing is, I've only got, I've got three elite clue scrolls in half a task, even less than half a task. I started with 229 and I still have a 131 left. This is absolutely amazing. It should be about time now for me to get a cosmetic, so let's do it. Oh my god, that's a lot of purple sweets, holy shit, but nothing that interesting unfortunately, but I'll, I'll definitely take this, this is quite a unique elite clue. What the actual hell is going on? Like, I keep getting these elite clues, I, I, I'm not complaining, I'm not complaining whatsoever, let's do this, I think we can reroll this one. So basically when you reach 200 biscuits in your bank or anywhere on your account, you cannot receive them anymore, however, they will turn into purple sweets. I have 199 biscuits in the bank, so I'm one off the cap. Now I don't think you can actually get one biscuit from a clue scroll, so I think it just automatically from now on converts them to purple sweets. I think that why I got that's why I got 26 in the last elite clue scroll. It looked a bit much, but I think that's because it converted. So will I ever be able to get 200 biscuits? Because I think I'm stuck on 199. Anyways, let's open this elite casket and see what I get. Uh, nothing really that interesting, but yes, we can reroll this one, so let's do that. This is elite number 66, so that might be a sign. Please give me something good. What the hell is this, man? 109k and only noted... Whatever, let's, let's, let's screw this. We have two kill count left of this Order of Ascension task, and I did indeed get two keys, the Quintus one and the Sextus one, and I have none of these signets, so... Let's see if we're lucky enough to get one. So the Quintus one didn't really give us a signet, but we got some Onyx Bolt tips, which is not too bad. That's some decent money, which I kind of need right now for prayer. So let's get into the Sextus one. My recording of the Sextus kill unfortunately got corrupt. Yeah, I know it's such a pain in the ass when that happens, and I really hate when I can't show you guys what happened. But I got some coins and I got blue charms, but uh, I do have 1450 blue charms and 3100 crimsons. Now, the thing is, I want to use them, but I don't feel like it's a good time to do that because I think prayer is more important than summoning at the moment. Because even if I use all of those charms, I don't think I will get 93. Uh, Sorry, 96 it is for Pakyak, and um, yeah, then it's not really relevant for anything in my opinion, because that's like the only thing I want. 
So, also, the reasons why I don't really use them, even though I have, like, so much granite that I can use for the crimson charms, and I have adamant bars that I can use for the blue charms, um, it costs a lot of money, and I only have 8 mil right now, and honestly, I want to use that money on prayer instead, so I'm just going to keep it for now, but when I do hit 95 prayer, I'm most likely going to put all my money into summoning. Alright, we just hit a 98 ranged, meaning one more level and get 99 ranged. And after that, I'm going to put all my ranged experience into defense, so you guys can finally stop saying, Why the hell do you have 83 defense? But anyways, I'm killing Celestial Dra- Ooh, hard clue scroll, perfect, I'm going to do that in just a bit. Uh, but the reason why I'm actually killing Celestial Dragons now and uh, have removed them from my block list because they were there uh, is because I have super anti-fires now and it makes a huge difference with these creatures. You should really never do them if you don't have it, unless you like torture because I had it to do in like 7 trips before of a task of 120. So it was pretty bad, but now they have super anti-fires, they don't do any damage whatsoever unless you're in melee range. So they're pretty easy to do. They uh, take a very long time for me to kill. Uh, I think I've killed 32 of them in 22 minutes. So yeah, they're pretty slow. It's going to take more than an hour to kill the all of the 123 that I have left. But hey, maybe I can do some clues in between. So that's going to be cool. Well, so far this turned out to be quite an eventful uh, Celestial Dragon task. 101 Slayer as well. Now, I don't really need that. I mean, it's not very useful for my account. I mean, the 120 Slayer Cape is going to take me way too long to get, I think. Uh, maybe I'll get it someday, but hey, I'll take it. It's good for supplies doing Slayer and it's fun doing Clue Scroll, so I'll definitely take any small achievements I get. Oh my god, I've never got these before! Celestial Hand Wraps! Dude, that is so cool! Oh, people saw it in the chat as well. Oh my god, I feel so lucky. Wait, let me see how many I've killed, if it actually counts here. Yes, it does. I have killed 224 of the Celestial Dragons and I get Celestial Hand Wraps. Okay, so if you don't know what this is, it's actually tier 90 Magic Gloves. Now, they're Power Gloves, so they give Magic Bonus a good amount of it as well. But the thing is, they do degrade. They degrade quite slow, so you can use them a lot, actually. But when they do de degrade completely, they just disappear. So you cannot repair them, but they are going to be so good for a lot of bossing that requires magic. AK, I'm going to use them for God Wars 2 every single time I go there, instead of my subjugation gloves. So that is actually really cool. So after all those levels and those celestial hand wraps, I'm going to complete this hard clue scroll. So let's see what we get from this one. Let's see if we get something good. Another combo, you know. I'm actually just going- Oh, that's a lot of nature runes. I'm actually kind of short on that. I'm going to call that pretty good hard clue. So let's go into the bank real quickly. How many nature runes? 821. All right. So let's see how many combos I have. Also, Guthix arrows, how many I have? 1.1k of those, by the way. 1.4k of those. Uh, let's see how many magic combos I have. I have 41 and I have 36 new combos. Should I use those for invention? Is that a good idea? Or should I just keep them because that's a cool collection? But anyways, I'm going to end the video here, and in the next video I'm going to complete the Celestial Dragon task and do some other awesome stuff. Obviously, progress towards a uh, Walgothic Sleeps, and uh, it's going to be great. So I hope you guys did enjoy this one, and uh, let's just admire this one for a second. So see you in the next one, guys. Take care.